Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Melissa, Corey, Leslie. It is so great talking to all three of you. I saw the tour of In the Heights when it came through Minneapolis and absolutely yeah. loved it. And this is such a strong, beautiful adaptation of it. So congratulations on such a lovely film. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank yeah. You. Now describe getting that call that you're going to be in this massive movie musical from Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Melissa, why don't you start that one? Um, uh, yeah, I think he, I think he FaceTimed all of us. I don't know. I know he FaceTimed you, Leslie. I haven't heard your story actually, Corey, but he FaceTimed me from Puerto Rico. He was doing the Hamilton run. Um, and, uh, and I freaked out because I was told that I was going to get a call from the casting director, not Lynn. And that the call was to like, ask me a few questions and get to know me better so when he pops up on the screen, I like my heart skipped a beat and I almost dropped my laptop to the floor. And, uh, and he was like, who, who are you expecting? I was like, not you for sure. <laughs> not you. And, um, and then he said, uh, I, I was like, I, I was expecting Bernie Telsey. And he said, no, no, Bernie, Bernie gets to do all the work calls. I get to do all the good calls. Like you're playing Vanessa in the Heights. And I just, <laughs> lost it I completely lost it I cried for the next three hours nonstop, and I remember feeling like I was floating like I was having an out-of-body experience and I and I kept thinking like this like I'm sure this is a dream like I'm sure I'm gonna wake up any second it was an incredible feeling mm, I love that Leslie this is your film debut was the, did you feel that pressure coming in or did you think I got this I can do it Oh yeah, I felt, oh yeah, I got, the, no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I felt the pressure every single day, like every day and, and the, the, uh, the opportunity of it all, of course, and that, that the experience was going to be life-changing, but also the pressure, a lot like what Nina feels of like, man, not only do I not want to mess this up just like for me, but like, I want to make sure I do a great job because I'm doing something that like my fam, I've never seen anybody in my like family do and I'm representing them, you know, I'm representing so much. And we all felt that, like, we all felt like this is for the culture as Anthony always says. And so like that personal per uh, responsibility went into every ounce of what we you know, did, did on and off screen to prepare, um, for, for this, for this moment. Yeah. Corey, I loved straight out of Compton and black Klansmen. I had no idea that you were such a strong singer with these talents that you just were like keeping inside you and like waiting to unleash or was this just a whole new side of you that you even you tapped into? I guess so. I, I, I always sang as a child and always, you know, sort of danced and moved and, I was an actor who moved well, I guess, <laughs> an actor who sang, right, yeah. but, but, but never, um, I, I, this was, this did sort of open up another side of me. And I wasn't really a musical theater fan in the Heights. It was the first musical I saw on Broadway, but I, but so that's what I thought musical theaters were M musical theater sort of was and music, what musicals could be. So um, th this definitely allowed me to kind of jump into you know, a, another side of me. And I, I don't know, maybe, maybe in the sequel, I'll get to explore it a little bit more. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, ah. I, I love that. <laughs> I, 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 already. Yeah. I, yeah. Pitch that for sure. Absolutely. Um, I got the rap signal, which I'm so bummed because I want to keep talking about this. I was a music theater major in college myself. So I just, I love music theater and I hope so many people see this. Melissa, I'm also a massive scream fan and cannot wait on a scale of one to 10. How excited are you for that to come out next year? like 20. Yeah. It's going to be so good. I'm so excited to talk to you about it when the time yeah, is right. Please, please. I want to talk to you again about yeah. that movie. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks guys. I appreciate Thank it. You Thank so you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Paul Bye. McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Jimmy, Olga, it is fantastic talking to both of you today. I saw the national tour of In the Heights when I came to Minneapolis years ago and just loved it. And this movie is so beautiful and phenomenal. And congratulations to both of you on it. It's so great. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Now, Olga, I want to start with you. What did it mean to you to get that call saying they wanted you to reprise your Broadway role? Well, Paul, I, when Lynn called, I was like, I was in Miami in the car with my mom, who's like 90, going on 97 now. She was, I think, 94 at the time. And the caretaker, I said, oh, my God, it's Lynn. <laughs> Is it good news or bad news? And so I was really, really nervous. So I really thought they were going to, he was going to say, listen, you did a great audition, but 
I want y'all wanted you to hear from me. We had to give it to somebody else. But yeah. I was screaming. I was crying and screaming in the car. And uh, Lynn was doing Hamilton in Puerto Rico. And I was just, you know, I was just ecstatic. I, I, I just felt like somebody, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. A theater actor getting to do their role in the movies. When does not, that happen? Not, not a lot. Not a lot. And for it to actually work well, too. Sometimes they do that and it doesn't always work, but you're so phenomenal in this movie. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Abuela is the matriarch that everyone looks up to in the movie and that everyone aspires to kind of be. Who are the people in your life that you've looked up to throughout the years? Jimmy, why don't you start with that one? Well, um, for the Kevin Rosario role, I, I think I was channeling a lot of my tios, my uncles, and, and, and of course, uh, the parents. And, and being a father, too, I mean, I understand that whole thing of uh, the dynamic of wanting your wanting the... You're the the prodigy, the 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 next the the generation that precedes you to go and to go to the next level, and sometimes there's an undue pressure because of that. But uh, and I understand being from uh, the Nina Rosario point of view as well, because I being being the first one to go to college in my extended family, we had that. You know, I felt that same kind of pressure as well. Where do you fit in? What is the whole thing about the notion of home? And is our culture back there or is it here now? And I, I think it's a story that it's a, it's a consistent story that is part of the American fabric with regards to, you know, it, it might be Polish. It might be Italian American. It might be people that have come from the southern regions to the north. You know, it's that 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 whole feeling of community yeah. is something that is a running theme in, in the project. When did you guys both realize that you were making something really special here with this film? Was there a moment during filming where like, we got this, like, this is, this is, this is, this is it. This is strong. I think when I witnessed some of those epic musical numbers, I said, Oh my God, this is, this is huge. The, the, and like Jimmy said before, the collaboration between Tiara Alegria, who does just, Stepping it up a notch from the stage play, adding some some uh, some social issues in there, some surprises, and Lynn and Chris Scott, the choreographer, and John Chu together. It was like these 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 incredible creative people together. They were like the perfect combination, and um, it, there was such joy on the set. And we were filming in Washington Heights, and the people were so proud of us being there, and. Um, it was just a magnificent experience for me. I just, oh. you know. Yeah, I love hearing that. I got the rap signal. Unfortunately, I wish I could keep talking about uh -huh. it. Congratulations. I know. I love this movie. And I, I hope that so many people just flock to the theater to see it or HBO Max if they have that too. Because it's really well, wonderful. I, I, I hope that that our DVD gets added to a, to the edition of, of back, back there. Yeah, Look of at course that. It I was a music theater major in college. So like we have tons of musicals and like plays and Broadway. Yeah. So yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Daphne, Gregory, it is so great talking to both of you today. I really loved In the Heights. I saw the national tour when it came to Minneapolis and the movie is just so wonderful and beautiful. And so thank you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, Daphne. Um, the movie and the musical starts off with lights up on Washington Heights. When you hear those words or think about that place, what does that mean to you? Um, well, for me, you know, I did not grow up in Washington Heights, but it's uptown, uptown, and um, and you know, it's it's a Latino neighborhood. It's it's Dominican strong, and you know, it's a place where you go to get like a really good blowout the best kind of food and, you know, uh, listen to me, you know, it's just the culture in the streets. It's wonderful. And also anything in New York city makes me happy. Yeah. Oh God. Yes. Now, Gregory, what did you take away from working with Anthony Ramos and the rest of this phenomenal cast? Yeah. Working with Anthony was great. I mean, he's really immediately from our first chemistry test that we had with one another, it was just an immediate connection. And, and he's kind of like a big brother, um, you know, throughout the entire filming process just getting to work with him so closely was amazing because I really got to you know build a deeper bond and and pull different bits and pieces of wisdom 
Yeah. Oh, I love that. He's he's so good in this movie. Now, Daphne, my husband saw you in Rent on Broadway. This is the program from back then. He pulled it out for me. Now, if I was listening to the soundtrack like any young music theater kid did over and over and over again. Are there similarities that you found when making In the Heights and Rent and the responses that they both have received? Yeah, I mean, there's a confluence. It's divine almost to me. I mean, I'm really corny, but I think of Lynn as, you know, a descendant of what Jonathan Larson was doing. And, you know, before that, there was Stephen Sondheim, but that was before me. But also, you know, a story that is literally about gentrification, but is literally not about it. It's about love and community and how people take care of each other and how that is the real thing. Like that is striving for one's dream, you know, and to, to you know, have grown in this business to have had a career that I could watch. Now there's Gregory, you know, yeah. and, and there's kids younger than Gregory in the film and, you know, that it keeps going. Um, and that these stories are, are not only um, relevant, whatever that means, but like, like necessary, you know, medicinal in a time like that. No. Oh, we like need that. stories of love and compassion and empathy yeah. and, Oh God, yes, yes, Daphne, thank you. Um, Gregory, it's a huge undertaking to be in a big movie musical like this. Does it feel like work when the energy is this high and fantastic throughout the whole filming? Absolutely not. I, I mean, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It just kind of felt like I was showing up on set like to have fun. It was almost like going to summer camp because we were <laughs> it was just like, you show, it was. you show up with like friends and family and then like, we're just here having fun. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, maybe there's a camera filming, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to film the best summer camp and the best summer ever. Um, uh, and here, welcome to your family. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it shows while watching the movie. Like, just, it is so phenomenal. I got the rap single. I wish I could talk about it today. This was a real treat. Again, Daphne, I mean, growing up as a rent head, this is just a real treat. So thank you so much. Give my this. love to your <laughs> husband. Thank you, Paul. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. John, it is really great talking to you today. I really loved In the Heights. I saw the tour when it came through Minneapolis, and the movie is so phenomenal and beautiful, and I just loved every minute of it. Thank, thank you. you. I love that room that you're in. You are in the, my dream room. Oh, my God. Thank you. This is It's all real. They're all real movies. I, I was about to say, I hope it's not virtual, because I want to, like, yes. How cool. No, it's real, for sure. Thank you. Now, I, I love your cast and I love that you used up and coming actors. Did you have to fight to do that? Or or was this there was there this push to do like, you know, a little Hollywood talent to be in the movie version? <laughs> well, um, the best part about working with Lynn manuel Miranda is he has power. And the best part about having just done Crazy Rich Asians, where we did discover a lot of people, uh, I also had power. So we were able to say to Warner Brothers, back off. <laughs> we are gonna go find these stars and they have to be able to ebb and flow between music, dance and dialogue and acting um, effortlessly. Like it's a part of their souls. And yeah. um, they understood that um, from the very beginning. So we had good partners. Good. I mean, you can see that in the actors you cast and it was yeah. great to see Corey Hawkins, who I did not Come know could sing and he's so magnetic in the movie. The movie. He doesn't know, he tells us in the audition, he doesn't sing or dance. And we're like, okay, let's try something. And we're like, what? Are like, you kidding me? Yeah. Lynn was like, I think I saw you sing the national anthem at a baseball game. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that was that one time. I'm like, that was that one. bro, you do it. Own it. Right. Now, describe Lynn manuel Miranda as a collaborator, because he mm. seems like this whirlwind of, like, energy and magic and just nonstop. Everything you hope that Lynn manuel Miranda is, he is. There is no, I don't have a different Lynn that I meet after when the, when the cameras are off. He has that energy. He loves to make, he loves to create. He loves to talk to people. He's interested, he's actually genuinely interested in any fan who comes up to him or anyone who talks to him, people in the community. He loves people. Um, and I, I do love people, but I also like my own little private space. Um, so I admire him so much that he, um, it is in every pore of his body. What a, what, what a, a pleasure it was um, to have him as a leader to look up to. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really uh, good to hear. Um, I mean, this movie is such a huge movie and it's, and people seem to be like having the time of their lives making it. Was there some, was there a moment when you realized while you were filming that this is something special, like 
we're making this and it's turning out and it's everything that we needed it to be. Yeah, usually when I'm shooting a movie, I'm so insecure the whole time. I'm like, oh, did we get that thing? I don't even know if we got that shot. I don't know. That's just going to cut together. But there was a moment you could feel that this was bigger than any of us from the day one. We cried almost every day of coming on set when we shot in the park. Uh, background people came up to us and they were like, you know, this is the first time we haven't shot a police car in this park before. Right. Comments like that just... Uh, I don't know. There's something where you, you, everyone is there for a reason. And we knew we had this giant, amazing musical that we could put on this, on the screen and have these beautiful, beautiful people, the community of all shapes and sizes and ages and colors, and that we could show off and they do their thing. So um, I never felt about, never thought about myself during that time. It was very clear. My husband noticed that in 96,000, like the whole pool scene, he's like, there are body sizes of everyone in the scene. And it was so phenomenal just to see. Yeah. Tattoos, oh. hair colors, piercings, ballet and sneakers. You know, we were just like, screw the rules. Right. This is going to give you as much joy and energy as any dance number you've seen in the 50s or 60s that most of these people weren't even allowed to be in. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it was beautiful. Oh. I wish I could keep talking to you. Thanks, John. I'm looking forward to you doing Wicked as well. I'm a big music theater guy. So this will we be- We got some tricks up our sleeves for that one too. Yes. Get ready. Thank you. I am, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks, Paul. Paul McGuire Grimes, KSTP, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Kiara, it is really great talking to you today. I saw the tour of In the Heights when it came through Minneapolis many years ago and absolutely loved it. I think that the movie is such a strong adaptation and so lovely and beautiful. And we both teared up watching it. So it was just lovely. So thank you. Thank you. I love if I can bring a little joy, and especially oh. right now. Oh my God. Yes. Joy. A hundred percent. Now you wrote the book of the musical uh, of in the Heights. How was it adapting it for a film? Was it harder than expected or was it a nice challenge in self editing? Um, you know, just, just so that your audience at home understands book just means the <laughs> script. So I was basically the playwright of the Broadway mm -hmm. production. And then I was tasked with also writing the screenplay. So for me, it was a wonderful challenge. Um, I don't, I had been working as a playwright for 15 years. And I think something in me was kind of hungry to try new mediums as a storyteller and as a writer. So I, I embraced the challenge um, with the caveat that I wanted to make it, um, I didn't want to replicate a stage experience on screen. I wanted to really try to make it a film. And uh, John Chu and Warner Brothers and Lynn were um, really on board with that vision. So they were like, let's do it. When I like that you even updated it to what's happening in 2020, 2021, you know, you shot it like 2019, I think. So it felt like you were even constantly improving it, not even improving it, but just changing it and upgrading it. So I, I love those changes. I mean, in the spirit of what Lynn told me back in 2004, when we first met and started collaborating on the stage play, he said that he wanted the musical to feel like you're walking down a few blocks in Washington Heights. People listen to music very loud with the windows open, car windows rolled down, kitchen windows, you know, pushed up and you pass through all these different styles. You'll pass through reggaeton and boleros and musica jibara on one block, you know? And so with the story and the dialogue, I also wanted it to feel like you're walking down the street. And in 2019, you're going to hear people talking about a lot of the same stuff, but also some new things on the street right. versus 2007 when we first brought it to stage. Now, what is Lin-Manuel Miranda like as a collaborator? Because he seems like he's this whirlwind of energy and magic and creativity that just never stops. Um, yes, like, I, I feel like it takes me about three cups of coffee to catch up to his first sip kind of thing, you know, but um, yes to all that. Like he, I think, takes true joy and playfulness in, in simply the most basic things we have at our disposal, like words, right? We're so used to the words we say, we don't even notice we're saying them. And he does something really magical by reminding us that language <sighs> can be extraordinary, you know, let alone the music. So it's very inspiring and it's super fun. It feels like being a kid and playing in a sandbox. Yeah, we often talk in our house about how words are important and words have meaning and what do those words mean and to use your words carefully and specifically. Was there a moment on set when you realized that you were creating something special and this was gonna be the movie adaptation that you needed and wanted it to be? Oh man, there were so many special moments on set. Um, it was truly one of the greatest experiences of my life as an artist and a person. Um, but one that just popped into mind is filming Abuela Claudia's big number, Paciencia mm. y Fe. Um, we shot that in 
in, in a subway station that's currently functional, but beneath the already subterranean subway platform is an even farther subterranean subway platform that had been out of use. It's, it was not used except for once a day for the trash train to come through. And so there we are, like, really, we went into the earth to film that number. The dancers had these beautiful uh, costumes on, but we're surrounded by dirt and grime from decades mm. of, of misuse of this subway platform. And you could feel like we took it deep and, and we did something extraordinary and kind of like an old forgotten place. Um, yeah. And we did it with care and precision and a lot of support and work. And that was magical. I loved hearing that. Oh my God. I wish I could keep talking to you. I love this movie. I'm so, I hope that people go to the theater and see it because it is so powerful and magical and warm and comforting and lovely and all of the adjectives and superlatives. It was great. Oh, thank you so much. It was nice yeah. to talk. Thank you. You too.